Hi everyone, Diogo Marquez here. In this video, we'll continue how to handle people's objections so you can move forward in completing the sale. In the first video, you will learn that all these objections come from a place of them not trusting something about you, the company, or what you're saying. As long as you keep uh, this in mind that this is the alpha, this is the person that decides, and that they do have a problem because you can see it on a spot, something like we talked about what you're presenting is cheaper or the product is much better, so there's a perceived value there, they are going to do something. So what you need to address is you, your presentation, so how you present yourself, your grooming, your confidence level, how you look them in the eye, if you read them, their, their body language correctly, that type of thing is portraying you, their your perceived, perceived value for them, so the person that can in fact solve the problem they have. Then it's about the product, so you transition from you to the product and they have to understand that the product works and when they test it and when they try to poke holes in it to see if the thing is rotten, if you can defend it in a, in a good way because you practiced, you're going to move for the company and from the product to the company. And they're looking at the company and saying if this is a trustworthy company, if they do, there would be absolutely no reason for them to sign. So it's important to have this in the back of your mind because you are going to encounter objections anyway. No one signs something like that without asking you stuff, right? Because no one wants to go from a place, a place of being okay to a place that they will be in pain. People try to move from pain and go towards pleasure, move towards pleasure. So when making a decision, they have their like reptilian brain looking for things that they that could harm them in any way. So it's your job to make sure that the thing is, is working. And you, you do that, you make sure the thing is working if you keep your understanding of what they're saying and then you keep the level of you, the product and the company that the highest that you can. And there will be a point in their mind that there will be a trigger and that they, then they will do it. So when you hear an objection, you need to immediately understand in what field are they not trusting you. Is it you? Are you looking anxious? Are you not looking them in the eye? And when they ask you something, then you look like edgy. You will notice this because if this, that's the case regarding you, you will hear an objection when they're looking at you. So it's about you. If on the other hand, when you are st starting to talk about the company and then you hear an objection, it's about the company. The last one is regarding the product. If you're explaining the product, they ask you a question and you need to understand what question are they asking you and what are they referring to. If they are referring to the product and you answer something and you hear an objection, you know it's about the product. So as long as you keep this in mind, you have to craft your answers regarding in what bucket this, this applies to. So let's say you're selling a utilities contract. Let's say it's an energy contract. So the whole pitch, the whole thing is change from this supplier to this one and your utilities bill will come from what you're, whatever you're paying to like 10 bucks a month. You're paying like 300 and you're paying like 10 now. Something like that, it doesn't matter. Just, just an example for you, to, for you to see. So in this case, if you hear an objection and let's say it's regarding, let's say the product, they will say something like, I need to think about it. And your answer will be, your utilities energy will be coming tomorrow. Would you need to think about that? And then you wait. You wait. First person to, speaks, to speak loses. So you have to wait. Don't say anything. Now they are in a place that they are on a spot because they can't answer the same thing back to you. They can't say, it again, they just can't say like, I need to think about it. It just does, it's, doesn't equate to anything. You are putting them on the spot. When you do, you show them the product again. Whatever the thing they answer, doesn't matter what they answer, you show them the product again. And now you make sure you're saying the correct things to address whatever it is that you missed. And you know that because when you earlier on, when you were like presenting the product and then like they had that click, I need to think about it, you know it was that answer. 
So you need to answer that back in a way that I understand it. Okay? The last one, actually not the last one, the second one would be I need to speak with my wife or my partner or the absent party, unavailable party, the one that is not there. In reality, what they're telling is I don't want to do this and I don't want to tell you that I want to do this. So it's, I would, I, I would do it. And unfortunately, my partner isn't here. So I need to think about the subject. I need to talk with my wife, my partner, my Martian, my dog, whatever the case might be. I just want you to get the hell out of here because I'm not going to the site. When they answer something like that to you, they're using indirect language. And you can't be direct when they are speaking indirectly to you. This is a main point that I disagree, highly disagree with some of those videos that I see there on YouTube because just that just doesn't work. It's, you can't make a tantrum and turn things like, you have to make a decision, I came here, you're wasting my time. They don't care about you. They don't give a shit about you. All the people care is about themselves. And they are lying to you. I have my mic here, we're like, hold on. Let me just put this thing. They are lying to you. They are, they are bullshitting you, so you need to address it. And you need to keep your level like, you know, like, you are BSing me and I'm addressing this, but I'm not being direct. You cannot be direct when they are being indirect with you. It's a, it's a brain thing. I, I can't tell you why, I don't know why. I just know that it doesn't work when you're being direct, when they are being indirect with you. You need to be indirect with them as well. So if the person tells you, I need to speak with my wife, your answer would be, what would your wife's concern would be? And then you wait again. You don't say anything else. Now he's on the spot because he can't be go back to the same type of answer. And you notice something weird. What you notice is that immediately they'll answer something. Say something, well, it's just like it's the price that... And notice the, the, the word I. So they were speaking about the novella party. It was the wife that would be making a decision. Although you know they are the alpha. But now they are speaking about the novella party. But when you put him on the spot, not being direct, I mean being indirect, now they're saying I. So they're lying. You know they're lying, right? But now you are extracting information from them. And this is the most important thing. It's like you make a presentation, they make an objection, you deal with the objection in a way that they answer you what the objection is in a way that you know how to address it. And then you present the product again or the company or portray yourself in a different way. See what I mean? So when you hear indirect language in what terms might be, you cannot, I, I'm telling you this from experience because I do this for a living. I don't have a wage, a fixed wage. I live on commissions. So you just need to learn how to navigate from like these types of situations. And when people are being indirect to you, you have to have like this vocabulary of indirect answers so that you use them when people are being indirect with you. And there's no way to this unless you practice. All industries are different. People are the same. They have the same type of answers regarding like in this objection chapter. So you need to craft your pitch. You need to have like answers tailored up for your specific product. That way you are addressing this specifically. And when you hear one of those objections, you have like not one, but you have like a couple of them, right? You use like a couple of them. The one that you see that fits better to the, that specific uh, situation that you are in. And the last one, so it's these are the main three. The last one, the third one is I never make a rash decision. And I save this for last because this is a little bit different. In the next video, we're going to cover personality types. And there are several types of personalities. People are different. They base their, their approach to the world based on their understanding of it. And as you grow up, you build this um, approach to things. And what happens is you start building uh, more trust in a way that you deal with the world. 
there are people that had like this super disorganized family and they understood that that then didn't work, that caused pain. So they started to become very organized. And in, as they deal with life and go through several situations, they see that every time they were like in a situation that co was causing stress and they came up with solutions that came from a place of organization, it worked, now they're like focused on it. So they became like detail oriented people. And these types of personalities are very hard to sell door to door because they don't make rest decisions. They are analytical. They don't uh, connect with emotions. You could be saying something like, oh, I died yesterday and now I'm alive here, like momentum. And I have a tattoo on my chest and I starved and I'm here and I want to make it in the world one day or my daughter, I want to feed them. They don't care about that, like zero. They're looking at a document and you see this like, it, <laughs> I had meetings like private equity people and family offices and all that. They have like bean counters there. They're like rude. They don't even look at you. They're like looking straight down like to the sheet and like their Excel spreadsheets or whatever the case might be, it's just numbers, right? They don't care about you. They're looking like 33.42%. You have 50 basis points here. This is incorrect. It should be 48 basis points. Right, so this is this is this is a, a high disconnect from being emotional. So you need to know who's who's in front of you, and the most typical objection uh, these people say is, "I don't make a rash decision," and they are right. They don't make a rash decision in their minds. Obviously, they are wrong because you're a salesperson. You are listening, but you are listening selectively. And this is how you answer. Before you are answering, and this is something that also you don't see this addressed a lot, but this is how I found uh, some to, to work. Because every time that I was in front of these people, I already knew, like I was doing the presentation, but it's like my mind disconnects when you're doing a presentation and you're just looking like a 30,000 bird's eye view, like looking at the thing and saying, how can I do this in a way? Because I already know these types of people. They're like the hardest one to, to close. So you need to address them in a different way because they do make rash decisions. So you need to use what I call, it's like open logic. And it's just a term that I come up with in like, it's an open question that involves logic and they have to answer, but there's no answer because you're right. I'll give you an example. So let's say you're presenting the thing and then they say, I don't make a rash decision. And then you say, did you need to think about taking breakfast today? And then you wait, right? So they, how could they possibly answer something with logic? This is why I say this is open. They can't close this and it's logic, like it's in, in their field, right? So, and then you wait and it is the same thing. As you wait, you're going to do the same process again, like we did in the, in the last type of objections, which is you say something, they object, they object. You use one of those answers, triggered answers to deal with the objections. And then you let them speak, right? Now they're going to tell you something. Then you use it to go back to the presentation and then keep going through. This is how you do it. So, these are the three main objections that you will encounter every time that you're making a presentation. The first one is, I need to talk with my wife, my spouse, my this unavailable party. The other one is, I need to think about it. And this last one is, I don't make a rash decision. So the logic here, and this is one I wanted to, for you to, to have a better grasp of, is you need to practice this. So you need to like put yourself in like devil's advocate place. It's like, what would be the worst possible scenario when I would do this presentation, doing this presentation and they write things down and you try to come up with answers, but it's like, not like yes or no, you have to make them speak. The more the person uh, talks, the more they lose because they'll start um, getting tired and they'll start giving you signs and a better understanding of what's going on there. People pretty easily, lose their line of thought when they're speaking. It's like a, a, an inner trigger. I don't know why. Obviously, it's a different situation because I'm speaking to you like I'm doing a presentation. No one's here. 
just me and the camera. But when you're like in a, a real life situation, the less you speak, the better. And this is something that goes like counterintuitive, but it's like the more a person speaks, the, uh, the higher the chance goes for you to close a sale because they are speaking more. So all you gotta do is like push them a little bit to the left, push them a little bit to the right, and that's the goal line. That's what I wanna do. So when you encounter these objections, this, this is the logic that you need to use. It's like they tell you an objection, you need to understand in which of the, these buckets it's like portraying to, it's like you, it's a product or a company, right? And then what you do is use a counter for that specific objection. And then you wait. They will speak something and then you go back to the presentation and like be more assertive in, in regards of what they are gaining. They have to have this understanding that they are, they are having more pain standing where they are than if they move forward. It's like that, that movie, uh, what's the name? Saw, that, that's, that's the movie. You know, that's like the, the guy that puts people in a situation that if they don't do anything, they're gonna die, right? And this is what you have to do to people when you're doing a presentation. It's like, it's worse where they are, so they have to move. All you gotta do is show the case in a way that there is absolutely no reason for them to feel pain because they will be worse at what they are. This is all about intelligence. It's about social intelligence. It's about logic. It's not about emotion at all. You, you'll be better off if you have a low emotional IQ because you can navigate through people's BS better. People are liars by default. They lie all the time, don't believe the, the gurus type of stuff. People are liars. That's it. They, they just lie because they want to get out of the situation and because they are not um, upfront and direct with people, they will tell you this type of stuff. Otherwise, they will tell you something like, I'm not interested. Like, they're being blunt. But at least they're being honest and not wasting your time. See? You'd rather have that. See? But that's not what people do. They like, listen to you and then I need to think about it. I need to speak with my wife, my cousin, my Martian dog, my green fellow that comes to earth like one time in 15 years, call me, call me then. Or even worse, I'll call you. So this is what, what I wanted to convey to you, this message. Understand that people are liars by default. Understand that you're doing a good job because you're presenting a product that will help them. So all you gotta do is deal with the stuff they have in their mind in order to make it clear for them this is a good decision, you're a good person, there's absolutely no worries. They are be much better off doing business with you. So you have to deal with this, that's it. You just have to deal with it, understand that it's gonna happen and the more you practice, the better you, you'll be because as you encounter more and more of these situations, your script will start to become better. You, have, you develop like more vocabulary in each of these types of situations and you will become a better closer. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe and click that bell button below so you can get notified every time that I make new videos like this.